So if you compare the Steramis bit solution versus the ultraviolet systems, the Steramis is a fog and it's going to go everywhere. Okay, the UV is, is a direct line of sight, like a light bulb. The farther away that you are from the UVC system, the less kill you're going to get. Okay, the beauty of using either the surface unit or the environmental system is that you're going to get an even distribution of the OH ions. The big thing from a, from a user standpoint is that you're not going to have to worry about shadowing. You're not going to have to worry about getting underneath something. You're not going to have to worry about getting into drawers. The fogging technologies allow for a better distribution than a UVC system. So the UVC systems are more labor intensive because you got to come in and keep positioning them differently throughout the room. And if you have, uh, in the article from Lance, suggested that one of the reasons that they think that they didn't get effective kill, one of the potentials for, for MRSA and for C. diff, was that they really didn't get the UV systems into the bathrooms. So they didn't get good, you know, uh, exposure. So the UVC systems are often spot treatments, okay? And by the way, some people have said to me, well, the surface unit for ceramics is a spot treatment. The answer is no. You, with the handheld unit, which we will demonstrate for you, you can go around the room, and you certainly can do spot treatment if you want, but the fog distributes throughout the space. Okay, so we know that UV has a three to four log kill and some at a five log kill at approximately three feet, we have six logs. The cost is really different, 80,000 to 125,000 per UVC system, and the fact that you have to usually pay, yes sir? Where's the log? Oh, the, the log kill? It's, I'll let you do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get to log kill. Okay, so, a log is an exponential of 10, okay? So when you're looking at growth curves, okay, and you're looking at the percent kill rate, the EPA requires that you achieve a certain number of organisms killed in a certain amount of time, and that's a log function. Okay, so if you look at a bacterial growth curve, you'll, at maximum growth, when they're dividing at the fastest rate possible, it's a straight line, and it's, you know, for every organism, it's a different. So log kill means, does it achieve, you're reducing it by 100 every time. I'll, I'll, go, I'll show you a picture in a second. Um, so six logs is the minimum effect, efficacy that EPA will require. That's a pretty, that's, how many zeros is six, right? That's a log, six logs, how many zeros? As I've already said, many UV technologies do not emit peak germicidal C-band, which is 240 to 280, and that's what you need for maximum efficacy of your UVC. There's some evidence that bacteria can be mutated by the use of UVC, and that there is some uh, resistance to um, UV in light, in water, and you know that UV is sometimes used to, to, uh, to disinfect water in water systems, you'll see them. Um, it may cause damage to the user if, if you don't wear the appro uh, appropriate protective equipment, uh, corneal damage. That's why most of the machines have a fail-safe stop, so they're not emitting. And we also know that UV does deteriorate plastics. Now, DARPA, the company that uh, developed the Steramis machine, did extensive material compatibility studies. And that data is available to you. Should you want it, just please ask Jeff for it. But the material, I, I'm not sure, did we hand that out? Okay, so in your packet, you do have it. Um, what I did was summarize some of the DARPA studies. You will not get degradation of rubberized plastics, et cetera, et cetera, okay? With, with repeated, and I'm talking over a thousand-fold um, exposures. Okay, so as I've already mentioned several times, no, notice that this particular unit has several different um, light sources, and I don't want to be a de beat a dead horse here, we do not have good 
data that says how effective each of these UVC units are going to use. So if you're going to consider a UVC unit, please make sure you do your homework. Okay, because the more money people spend on advertising, the more you're going to see of that particular product that's out there. And there's some of the companies have done a really great job advertising, but the one machine that's out there that's really being advertised to death is the least effective of the UVC units. So again, like anything else, does it have its place in an environment? Perhaps. The question is, is, is it being used correctly? OK, so how does cost factor in? Where is the proof of efficacy for any product that you use? OK, so here's our log. OK, 3 log is 99.9% .9 to, to 4 log kills, 99.99%. So how many times have you seen ads Ads and you look and say, oh, wow, 99.99%. That must be great. That's a four log kill. That's not satisfactory for hospital use. OK? Because you, know, you see that all the time on all the labels, right? And, and your advertisements. But most people don't understand what a log is, right? It's a log of 10. So three logs is 99.9. .9, four logs is 99.99. .99. Five, five logs is going 99.9, and then six logs is one more decimal beyond that. OK, so it's 99.9999. Does that, does that help? That's a great slide, right? <laughs> so what that's saying is, is, OK, so what percentage are you going to have left if you have a six log kill of any viable bacteria? Does that make sense? Well, since a bacteria can replicate, usually a bacteria have a range of replication, but a bacteria can replicate every six minutes, it doesn't take long to get a million bacteria. So even if you only have 0.01 left, you're going to have a contaminated surface within a couple hours. OK, does that, does, from a cleaning standpoint, does that make sense? OK. So that's why we want to get the maximum amount of kill that we can get with any device that we use or any chemical that we use. There are some, you know, 10 to the 6 is what the EPA requires. 